Hi. In my previous video, we looked at the insight of a four-way Wilkinson power divider and combiner and measured the characteristics on a VNA. Along with the four-way divider, Verbal Microwave also sent in this directional coupler, which can operate between 500 MHz and 20 GHz with a 20 decibel coupling. Verbal Microwave is a local company in New Jersey, just a couple of states away from where I live and they specialize in high-performance RF and microwave frequency products from DC all the way up to 26.5 GHz. Be sure to check out their website following the link in the description below if you are interested in any of their products. Anyway, most people watching this channel probably already know what a directional coupler is. It essentially allows RF signal to go through the main path with very little attenuation or insertion loss in either of the directions. And when the signal is going through from the import to the output, as indicated on the device, a small portion of the signal also comes out from the coupling port. As to how much is coupled through it varies by device specifications. For this directional coupler, the coupling factor is specified as 20 decibels. This means that the signal level coming out from the coupling port would be 20 dB below the input signal level. As you can see from the specifications, the coupling is very uniform across the specified frequency range and the insertion loss is also very little. It's just over one decibel at the high end of the frequency. We also have the figures for directivity, which is measured between the power difference at the coupled port and the isolated port. This number is measured during the manufacturing process as you cannot measure it once the directional coupler has been assembled because the load has already been attached to the isolation port here and because of the impedance matching is critical to the directional coupler's performance, you should never attempt to remove or change the factory installed 50 ohm termination on these directional couplers. Another figure supplied in the specifications shows the various return loss characteristics looking into different ports. So let's take a look at some of the indicative characteristics of this directional coupler. And this time I'm going to first do a point measurement using just a signal generator and a power meter. And then we're going to check out the performance on a VNA. Here's the setup. Right now the 8642B is outputting a 2 GHz 0 dBm signal. And the output power is measured by the WaveTech 1045 power meter. So you can take a look at the setup here. Right now, we're measuring just under minus 2 dBm, which is normal, as we do have some loss in the connectors and cabling. The actual number doesn't really matter, as we are going to compare relatively anyway. While we have the setup here, let's take a look at the insertion loss first. And now, I have hooked up the directional coupler. You can see the RF output goes into the input of the directional coupler port, and output goes into the power meter. Here, the coupling port is terminated, as I don't want any reflection to affect the reading. So now let's take a look at the actual reading here. Let me turn on the RF power. You can see that the measured power after the directional coupler only dropped a little bit at minus 2.8 dBm here. Since this is a directional coupler, some of the energy actually goes into that coupling port and dissipated it as heat in that uh, termination resistor. Of course, there's going to be some loss along the main line inside the directional coupler as well. As I mentioned earlier, the attenuation along the main line is the same regardless of which direction you go. And to verify that, I have swapped the direction of the input you can see here. The power actually goes into the output of the directional coupler instead of the input. What I want to do next is to verify how much energy is actually coupled. So for that, I'm going to swap it around again. So the input goes to input. And I'm going to terminate the output. and measure the output from the coupling port. So let me turn on the power again. 
And as you can see, we are essentially almost exactly 20 dB down as we were measuring minus 2.8 something like that before. Now we're measuring minus 22 dBm. Interestingly though, I don't see a spec mentioned for the isolation. Isolation measures how much power comes out from the coupling port if you put a signal into the output port. Now, I suspect the reason why this spec is not given is because this number is highly dependent on how well matched the termination is. So if you have any reflective power, the measurement could be way off. Anyway, we're just going to get a sense of what the isolation is. All right, so for that, I'm going to swap the input from the actual input port to the output port. So now the RF comes in from the output port instead of the input port, and we're still measuring the power at the coupled port. Let me re-enable the output. And as you can see, right now we're sitting at minus 37.8 dBm, which is very impressive considering that the input power is actually at zero dBm. So the isolation is very good. Of course, we can do all these measurements on the VNA as well. And as a benefit, we can see the characteristics across the entire frequency band. So let me do the same measurements on the light VNA and to quickly show you what the results are. And here is our insertion loss measurement. Let me just zoom in a little bit. You can see that over the entire frequency spectrum is quite flat. So ignore towards the higher end of the spectrum as the light VNA is no longer accurate at that high frequency. But you can see that when the frequency is in the gate curse range, we are still having just a little bit of insertion loss here. So that's actually very good. And here is our coupling measurement, as you can see the setup here. And again, you can see that we are essentially sitting right at minus 20 dB down and the entire frequency span is very, very flat. And this is the isolation measurement. You can see that we have already swapped the input from the input side to the output side. So that is measuring the isolation between the output and the coupling port. You can see that throughout the frequency range, the isolation is actually very good. At low end, it's uh, at minus 48 dB and even at higher end is roughly at minus 30 dB. Of course, towards higher end, the light of VNA is no longer going to be accurate, but uh, you can see that throughout the range, the isolation is excellent for this directional coupler. With the measurements out of the way, let's take a look at what you can do with a directional coupler. There are a couple of obvious use case scenarios. One is for signal sampling. And in this case, the lower the coupling factor, for example, minus 20 dB versus minus 10 dB, the less insertion loss you have along the main line. And this is useful if you want to monitor the output signal without disturbing it too much. Another use case is for generating leveled RF signal, and the coupling is essentially used in the feedback loop for controlling the output RF power. In this video, though, we're going to look at a couple of other use cases. The first one is to use it as a power combiner. Now, you could use a Wilkinson divider as we talked about in my previous video, and that usually gives you about 20 to 30 dB isolation between the ports. Alternatively, you could use a directional coupler as well, as you have seen that the isolation between the output port and the coupling port is excellent for a directional coupler when the impedance is well matched. Now for the demonstration, I'm generating a 2 GHz signal from my 8671A synthesizer up there, as you can see that. And the output from that 8671A is not level, and the output power is actually quite high. So what I did here is actually input that signal into the coupling port of the directional coupler. The other signal source is connected to the output port of the directional coupler, and that is coming in from the HP8642B. The signal coming from the 8642B is sitting at minus 10 dBm, and you notice it's also at 2 GHz. 
And the reason right now we're seeing two peaks on the special analyzer is because these two synthesizers are each running with their independent clocks. If you look at the special analyzer, you will see that these two signals are actually very close together. Right now we're sitting at a frequency span of 50 kilohertz. So these two signals are actually just over 5 kilohertz apart. So this dual tone signal you see on the special analyzer is actually the combined signal between the 8642B output and the 8671A output. And this setup is possible because we have the isolation between the coupling port and the output port when using that as an input. As you saw earlier, we have at least around 37 decibels of isolation at 2 gigahertz. And here I have brought these two signals even closer. You can see that the resolution bandwidth is at 30 hertz. And also the frequency span right now I have decreased to just 5 kilohertz. And if you look at the 8642B, I have adjusted the frequency downwards ever so slightly so that these frequencies are very, very close together on the special analyzer. On the special analyzer, you can actually see the quality of the two tones generated. The tone generated by the 8671A is actually a lot cleaner than what is generated by 8642B, which is the peak on the right here. Another use for the directional coupler is to use it as a reflectometer, and in this case it is very useful for antenna measurements. So that's what we're going to look at next. Right now I have set up my HP 8566B Spectral Analyzer with an external mixer to use it as a tracking generator. So the tracking generator signal is generated from that uh, HP 8670A synthesizer, and you can see that we have a 3621.4 MHz tracking signal. Right now the RF is turned off, and that goes into the mixer. And uh, here is the directional copper side of the setup. You can see that the IF signal comes out from the mixer and goes into the output of the directional coupler. And because we're using this as a reflectometer, we are hooking it backwards. And you can see here the coupling board goes back into the spectral analyzer to detect any signal that's reflected from the input port. So if I hook an antenna to the input port, I should be able to see the reflected signal on the spectral analyzer when the tracking generator is turned on. So let's actually first turn on the tracking generator and take a look at uh, the spectral analyzer. So now I'm going to enable the tracking generator. And uh, by the way, the spectral analyzer currently is sweeping between 1.5 gigahertz and 1.6 gigahertz. That, that's because we're going to use it to measure a GPS antenna. And the reason I narrowed it to this uh, very small frequency window band is because when we're using directional coupler along with this tracking generator, the resulted spectrum you can see is not super flat, but it doesn't really matter. We do have a way to make it flat. In fact, I might just do it here. So let's do that. Let's see if I remember how to do this. So let's uh, first display the line and uh, let's uh, move it down a little bit. And now let's do A minus B and goes back to A. So now let's do using the B to subtract the display line and goes back to B. And now we actually have this uh, straight line. So I think if I just turn off the trace B we should be good. Let's uh, display the line off. Yep, so that is our trace that now is nice and flat. Anyway, let's uh, hook up a antenna here. So let me go down here and show you. Let me zoom out. And here is our GPS patch antenna. We have used it in another video before, but uh, here is the SMA cable that you can see attached to the back already. So let me hook it up to the direction copper and let's take a look at the characteristics. And remember, we're hooking it to the input port of the direction coupler here as we're measuring the reflection from the antenna. So now it is hooked up, and uh, I will show you on the special analyzer, and we'll take a look here. As you can see on the special analyzer, the patch antenna has a very sharp resonant peak around its operation frequency here. So let's take a look at what that resonant frequency is. And I'm going to do a peak search, and uh, let's zoom. So 
So you can see the resonant frequency is roughly at 1.54 gigahertz. And now you know how to use a directional coupler in conjunction with the tracking generator and your spectral analyzer to measure antenna characteristics using the directional coupler as a reflectometer. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something useful about directional couplers. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. I will catch up with you next time.